So hi, my name's Jeff. I'm a hardware engineer at Meta. Uh, I'll be giving an introduction to Grand Canyon, which is our next generation a hard drive-based storage system, as well as a newly designed one-socket server module integrated into the Grand Canyon system, and that's called uh, Barton Springs. Uh, I'll go over the motivation behind the project, highlight some key uh, design enhancements, and give a quick introduction to uh, some of the system components. So here you can see a uh, picture of the Grand Canyon system with the drawer partially extended in the bottom right-hand corner of this slide. Uh, each 4OU drawer accommodates two logical storage nodes, and each storage node uh, supports 36 3.5-inch hard drives uh, for a total of 72 drives in a single drawer. Uh, the Grand Canyon system was designed with modularity in mind for easy serviceability as well as allowing the system components to be easily upgraded in the future. Um, on the upper right, there's a photo of the Barton Springs card. Um, it's our new one socket server used in the system. Uh, the server was designed to fit our chassis and deliver the compute specs we needed to meet our system performance goals. And uh, we'll get into some details about that later on in the presentation. So why are we building Grand Canyon system? Uh, the overall architecture is pretty similar to the previous generation, but there are some key incremental improvements that we want to highlight here. Uh, we're able to achieve higher CPU performance that's matched to our system needs. Uh, there were some chassis refinements made, specifically around the system vibration and acoustics, which enable the support of denser hard drives. And I'll talk a bit about that more later on in the presentation as well. Um, we're able to achieve uh, power efficiency gains over the Bryce Canyon system. And we wanted to maintain flexibility and modularity, but also make some enhancements in that area. Along those lines, Grand Canyon has the ability to support both open rack V2 and open rack V3 types, uh, rack types, but it will take some modifications to the, to the chassis if we do need to migrate to open rack V3, but the changes are you know, pretty straightforward. Um, we've increased the system modularity, which means easier upgradability in the future, and also helps support a longer project lifespan, especially as critical components uh, go into life. So here's an exploded view of all the components in the system. Since our time here is pretty limited, I'm not going to go into detail about each. But mostly what I wanted to highlight here is that the system can be built in three different configurations. Um, the first is dual storage server. Uh, there's two compute nodes and 72 hard drives, and that system's fully standalone. In this configuration, all the drives are powered on all the time for faster data access. Uh, the second configuration is single, single storage server. And this configuration has a single compute node that's used as a head node, and it's connected to two of the third configuration, which is a JBOD containing no compute nodes. So it's a single compute head node that connects to two JBODs, if that makes sense. And that configuration supports 216 drives. Uh, and this would be our solution optimized for lowest power consumption. Uh, each of the three different configurations, uh, dual storage server, single storage server, and JBOD, each have different populations for the various modules in the system. As you can see in the two diagrams that are on the right side. Uh, additional things to highlight here is the easy serviceability of the individual components where almost everything is either front accessible or top accessible, you know, to make repair or installation easier. Uh, one thing to note is that all replaceable parts can be swapped without the use of tools. And the uh, design supports hot swap replacements of hard drives, SSDs, and the fans. Uh, much like the rest of the Grand Canyon chassis, the single socket server here was designed with modularity in mind. So if future upgrades do need to be made, the process you know, is much easier. Uh, you can see here a little table with some relevant information about the different, uh, different criti critical components in the design. Um, the photo here highlights the location of some of these critical components on the board. You can see the CPU, the DRAM, boot drives, DIMMs, uh, PCH, and a few other things. So here we highlight some system performance spec improvements over the previous generation storage system. Um, we migrated to a more powerful CPU with enhanced performance capabilities matched to what our system needs. Uh, this includes uh, in increased uh, specking rate, increased DRAM bandwidth. Uh, the design also accommodates E1.S drives with the capability to increase the storage density of those drives in the future if we need to. And the uh, last improvement to highlight here is the system supports OCP uh, 3.0 NIC form factor, utilizing a 50 gig NIC with the option to upgrade to 100 gig NIC in the future. So as hard drive density increases, uh, the drives become more susceptible both to structural and mechanical vibrations. So some improvements had to be made in that area. 
A few things to call out here in these pictures. Uh, the fan cage has isolation from the chassis using an elastomer padding that helps reduce the fan vibrations from passing through from the fan cage to the main chassis. That's kind of like the gray boxes closest to the Grand Canyon chassis. Um, the design accommodates options to mount fan louvers to reduce air leakage during a fan failure. You can see the green kind of Venetian blind looking square there. Um, the idea there is the fan louvers will close if a fan fails to prevent air from leaking uh, back out that, that path, allowing the remaining fans to run at a lower speed as to compare it if there were no louvers installed. A few other improvements, the fan honeycomb pattern was uh, improved for better airflow. Uh, the design can uh, implement acoustic phone in installation at strategic locations. They're not shown here in these pictures, but it can be placed close to the last row of the hard drives in the system um, to help dampen vibration. Uh, the drive plane board, that's the board that all the hard drives plug into, has air gap seals to help reduce uh, le air leakage, allowing the fans to run at lower speeds and in turn causing less vibration. Um, you can see this in the middle picture where there are some arrows pointing to, to some of those locations. Um, some improvements were also made to the fans themselves, including a lower fan blade count and better geometry of the fan blades. And the system design accommodates a drop-in replacement of a new hard drive latch, which can be made out of a stiffer material, and that can help reduce vibration to the drives if necessary. And you can see that in the uh, picture on the right side of this slide. So we characterize the system with an acoustical and structural, with uh, acoustical and structural surrogates. Um, as an example, the surrogate can be seen here in the picture on the right, and it's basically a hard drive sized chassis with some microphones and accelerom accelerometers mounted in it to make some measurements. Um, in parallel, we reached out to hard drive vendors to help with structural characterization to compare all the different benefits of the vibration mit mitigation measures we put into the design. Um, we also built our acoustical surrogate to gather test data um, the first embedded link here shows our, our attempt at combining the acoustical and structural surrogate into one by bringing mics and accelerometers in together into the unit. Uh, the link shares some good info on the modeling work uh, that was done to bring the chassis to where it is now. In the future, we'll be uh, using a combined surrogate. I think that, that was, uh, presentation was given just a short while ago um, as part of a separate OCP work stream that's also linked in this slide. So if you find that topic interesting or you want to learn or contribute, we do encourage you to check that out and please participate. So the Grand Canyon system utilizes the latest IOC and expander from Broadcom. Uh, the capabilities designed into the system are listed below and include SAS Gen 4 capability. Uh, the system is able to use both SAS and SATA hard drives. Um, and the firmware and hardware has ca compatibility to support both command duration limit as well as uh, dual actuator hard drives. Uh, if you want to more learn more about the features of interest to Meta, please do check out the, there's a link to Tech Talk in the slide here. So at the time when I was making these slides, the uh, spec was in the OCP incubation committee, but the spec has been released to OCP website, so you can go there and check out all the nitty gritty details. Um, if you want to see the system in person, please feel free to stop by the WeWin booth located in the EXO hall. There's also a virtual reality tour in the Meta booth that you can check out. Um, also wanted to note here that the BMC code utilized in the system is available through OpenBMC GitHub repository, and that, that's linked here in the slide also. Um, so that's all I have for today. Thanks for listening and learning more about Meta's Grand Canyon system. I think we're basically out of time, well, but... Oh, all right. And if no questions, I'll be hanging around at the Meta booth for maybe an hour or two, and you can just stop by over there.